The last week of January is recognized as Emergency Shelter and Homelessness Service Workers Appreciation Week. On Monday, the City Council recognized prominent organizations in Barrie that provide these valuable services. These organizations um, share a commitment uh, to uh, dignity and uh, basic humanity. And that is something that we need a lot more of in the world today. Uh, and they practice this every single day. And so the, the, the people we're recognizing tonight, we've got the executive directors here to say a few words about what they do. I also have lists from each of them of the people who work uh, and in a couple of cases also volunteer uh, in the shelter system. And uh, I'm only going to read their first names as the lists are long, um, but I at least wanted to give that shout out because every one of the individuals we're gonna name tonight has done an incredibly difficult job, especially during a pandemic. The importance of these organizations were even more because of the vulnerability of many homeless people to the coronavirus and restrictions due to social distancing and other pandemic related measures. The organization recognized by the council for their services were David Busby Center, Salvation Army, Gilbert Center, Youth Heaven, Elizabeth Fry Society, and John Howard Society. Council Natalie Harris also added the name of Ryan's Hope to the list. Um, a quick thank you as well to Ryan's Hope. So they are an organization of all, purely volunteer and uh, Christine Naylor and her uh, husband Tom have been providing breakfasts um, I believe since last winter, so over a year now, to the homeless every morning. They also do a night shift where they drive around and try to fill in the gaps where other services might not have uh, the hands to do it that night. Um, and, and Christine and Tom also volunteer in the warming centers and are kind of a hub in the community for collections of donations and just an amazing advocacy and a voice in memory of their son, Ryan, who died because of the toxic uh, drug crisis. Well, we're able to recognize our shelter workers tonight and the, uh, and the uh, two outreach organizations that work with them. Uh, there are so many other great organizations in our community that we're thankful for as well. The executive directors of David Bisbee Center, Gilbert Center, Youth Heaven, Elizabeth Fry Society and John Howard Society spoke about their work and challenges they face. It is a special recognition of shelter workers and the emergency shelter and homelessness services. Uh, recognition week, of course, was the last week of January and it took a little extra time to get uh, the information and get everybody together for this call tonight, but I am delighted uh, tonight that uh, we are joined by um, uh, many of the executive directors of the organizations who have worked tirelessly uh, throughout the pandemic under extremely difficult circumstances and prior to the pandemic under always difficult circumstances uh, to uh, support our least fortunate, um, uh, the, the marginalized community in Barrie and sometimes marginalized community in Barrie. Um, these organizations um, share a commitment uh, to uh, dignity and uh, basic humanity. And that is something that we need a lot more of in the world today. Uh, and they practice this every single day. And so the, the, the people we're recognizing tonight, we've got the executive directors here to say a few words about what they do. I also have lists from each of them of the people who work uh, and in a couple of cases also volunteer uh, in the shelter system. And uh, I'm only going to read their first names as the lists are long, um, but I at least wanted to give that shout out because every one of the individuals we're gonna name tonight has done an incredibly difficult job, especially during a pandemic. And the very least city council can do is say a collective thank you. Uh, on behalf of our entire community. So that's how we're gonna to proceed tonight. And first we'll uh, bring into the call, I see she's here already, Sarah Peddle, Executive Director of the David Busby Center. Probably needs no introduction, but Sarah, thank you for the work you do. And uh, a few words uh, for us, I think tonight on, on the Busby Center and how you're uh, continuing to serve our, our more vulnerable population. Go ahead. Thank you to all of council for having um, having me here tonight to recognize our staff. Um, it has been a uh, 
very trying uh, time throughout the pandemic and of course before the pandemic. Um, but uh, definitely through through all of the COVID situation, um, as well as ex an exacerbating um, house housing crisis and dr uh, toxic drug poisoning crisis, um, it has been extremely trying on our staff. Um, and it's, so it's nice to see that council is recognizing their hard work. Um, they are the front line to the front line, and we don't get to recognize them enough for all of the amazing work that they are doing. Uh, on some given days, we have multiple overdoses a day that they are reversing. They are trying to support people that are really struggling with trauma um, and also just trying to get through the crisis as well as trying to figure out where they're going to live um, once all of this uh, once all of this ties up with the pandemic um, because we're seeing the most numbers we've ever seen in shelter. Uh, usually Busby Center sits at about 75 um, a night we are up over 140 a night that we are serving in shelter, as well as um, additional people that we're serving through our outreach teams. So our staff are just outstanding human beings. Um, we can't we can't express enough how amazing these individuals are to keep coming out every day and putting their lives on the line uh, sometimes to make sure that people are looked after. Um, we are just so thankful for all of our staff and all of the staff of all of the different organizations, all the shelters, all the warming centers, all the food security um, organizations, uh, Salvation Army staff create our meals for us every day, our outreach team go and pick them up, um, you know, and then again, our shelter staff are here daily. Uh, we just really are thankful that you are, are recognizing them and we hope that this continues with the community recognizing this really important work that they are doing. Um, I do want to have a bit of an honorable mention uh, for our program coordinator, our program manager, Tara Osment, who has been here since the beginning of the pandemic. Um, she actually was with Busby Center and resigned because she was moving to Chatham to start a new adventure, a new, new life, and then the pandemic hit and she couldn't leave. And she's been here supporting all of our staff through some really, really tough times while she's also been taking on, um, you know, losing a lot of people that she's worked with so hard in this community. So I just wanted to have a shout out to her and all the hard work that she's doing, but it does not um, negate all of the amazing workers that we have. And um, just thank you so much for the recognition for these amazing people. Of course, thank you, Sarah, uh, for the work that you do and personally uh, to thank you on behalf of council and the community for your own leadership and advocacy uh, all the way through uh, the most difficult couple of years, but uh, for, for so many years before that as well. Okay, I have a long list and I'm going to read everyone's first name and hopefully uh, some are watching, uh, but to each and every one of, of these individuals, thank you for the work that you do uh, through the David Busby Center to support those who need help in our community. Anandini, Alexander, Alex, Allison, Allison again, Amy, Amy, and Amy, Andrea, Andrew, Anthony, and Tony, Ashley, Ayana, Bailey, Barbie, Bernadine, Brandon, Brittany, and Brittany too. Candace, Carl, Carrie, Cassidy, Chad, Chantel, Charita, Chris, Christina, uh, Christopher, Crystal, Danielle, uh, Daniel, Darren, Dave, David, Destiny, Devin, Alicia, Emily, Gina, Haley, Haley with uh, two L's, Hannah, Harley, Holly, Isabella, Bella, Jacqueline, Jamie, Jace, uh, Jeff, Jen, Jennifer, Jessica, and Jessica again, Jessica with the K, Josh, Juby, Judica, Carolyn, Carrie, Carla, Catherine, Kelly, Kent, Keosha, Laurel, uh, Kevin, uh, Kevin again, Kim, Kurt, Lacey, Mackenzie, Kenzie, Madeline, Mateo, Melissa, Michelle, and Michelle too, both Mikes, Maloney, Misty, Natalie, Natalie Ann, Nagusi, Nikki, O'Neill, PJ, Rachel, Ryan, Rebecca, and her friend Rebecca, Riel, Ryan, Samantha, Sam, uh, Sarah and Sarah, as well as Sarah with an H, Celine, Geneva, Steph, Stephen, Tara and Tara, uh, Tara with an H, Tasha, Tasha as well, uh, Tatum, Tatjana, Thomas, Tracy, Trevor, Vanessa, the other Vanessa, Whitney, and Will. Thank you all for what you do for the David Busby Center.
Thanks again, Sarah, for being here tonight. As Sarah mentioned in her remarks that uh, the Salvation Army Bayside mission is currently preparing meals for those in the hotel uh, shelter dinners. Uh, and the Salvation Army Bayside mission, uh, of course, itself has its own residents, uh, but serves the community in meal preparation uh, and uh, meals out to the community that they have had to shift and deliver uh, lunch and dinner through uh, remote methods and uh, different meal prep. And they've pivoted uh, to deal with the pandemic in that way as well. Uh, Major Watkinson staff couldn't be here tonight, uh, but she has provided, because she's working at the shelter, uh, but she's provided a short statement. Uh, the Salvation Army has been part of the city of Barrie since 1883, 139 years. Throughout our history, there's always been volunteers and staff dedicated to meeting the basic needs of the community. This has never been so evident as over the last two years of the pandemic. The staff at the Bayside Mission Center have shown their commitment and personal strength in handling all the challenges they've faced. The shelter staff continue to support each individual that comes through the door with more than just a bed. They have been a listening ear and encouragement and a strength during these uncertain times. The cooks have been rock stars in preparing packaging and serving the growing number of meals to the community, residents and other shelters. The meals have doubled in the last four years, but our number of staff has stayed the same. And the hidden custodial staff that work tirelessly to keep all areas of our building clean and disinfected are extremely appreciated and not often noticed as they work their way through the building. All staff that continue to give their all to this work, uh, or all staff that continue to give their all to this work continue to impress me every day as not only are they putting themselves at risk at times, but many have made personal sacrifices of staying away from family in order to work at the shelter. Any, as many of these staff continue to pick up extra shifts to ensure that their needs are met. These individuals are amazing. And so to the staff of the Salvation Army Bayside Mission, I thank you and they are Alexis, Alan, Amanda, Aisha, Caitlin, Cecilia, Emily, Emma, Esther, Jade, James, Jason, Jessica, Joshua, Julio, Krista, Lois, Martin, Natalie, Nelson, Paige, and Samika. Thank you all for what you do. Uh, next tonight, we have the Gilbert Center and we have Sarah Tilly, harm reduction manager, who's with us tonight. Sarah, welcome to city council. And would you like to say a few words about the Gilbert Center? Yeah, sorry, just one sec. Hopefully you can hear and see me. Perfect. You can. Go ahead. Um, thank you, everyone. Good evening. And thanks for having us here tonight. As um, uh, Mayor Lehman has said, my name is Sarah Tilly, and I'm the harm reduction manager at the Gilbert Center for Social and Support Services. For those of you that may not know, the Gilbert Center is an aid service organization, and as such, we provide a variety of different services throughout Simcoe and Muskoka. This includes harm reduction programming, HIV and hepatitis C support, 2S LGBTQ programming, both for youth and seniors, as well as our Safer Spaces programming, which aims to support businesses and organizations in their work of creating safer spaces for queer and trans individuals and communities throughout Simcoe, Muskoka. At the Gilbert Center, a large component of our harm reduction work includes community outreach. And it's through this that we've been able to create and strengthen partnerships that will hopefully continue to grow well beyond this pandemic. While nothing about the pandemic or the opioid epidemic and poor drug policies have been good in, or easy in any way, it's been beautiful and humbling to see the amount of people who've stepped up and come together in an effort to support our communities. While our stance at the Gilbert Center is that we do not look down on or view people who use drugs as inherently negative, we know that people who feel loved, supported, and safe often use differently than those who do not. To this end, in addition to our out outreach that is able to support our unhoused neighbors by providing information to shelter and housing referrals, it's been a privilege to support the Warming Center led by the John Howard Society. It's a great honor to be recognized among the shelter providers here tonight in supporting our unhoused neighbors. And we look forward to continuing this work in the months and years to come. Thanks for, thanks for the recognition. Thank you very much, Sarah, for the work that you do and for, for what the Gilbert Center does. And uh, to Jerry Croto who's not here today, uh, thank you for your leadership as well uh, in providing these services out to our community in a difficult time. Uh, and uh, in specific, Jerry's given me uh, six names to mention of uh, staff at um, 
the Gilbert Center, Christine F, Christine N, Jackie, Nick, Sarah, of course, and Silas. Thank you to the six of you and to all others who support this organization for what you do in our community. Uh, next tonight, we want to uh, recognize the uh, good people at Youth Haven. And if we could bring Lucy Gowers, the Executive Director of Youth Haven, and oh, there she is. Hi, Lucy. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Go ahead. Nice <laughs> to have you here. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Um, first of all, I just wanted to thank and recognize everyone whose contributions have made a positive difference in the work that Youth Haven does. It's been two years since our world was unexpectedly turned upside down. In that time, I've witnessed an incredible amount of passion and dedication towards all youth who bravely make their way to Youth Haven, seeking our help and support. Our staff's commitment to our mission has grown even stronger as we continue to support youth experiencing homelessness or at risk of becoming homeless. They provide youth with every opportunity and support to meet their immediate needs while providing them with the necessary tools to help them access housing, education, healthcare, employment, and so much more. Thank you for recognizing our staff, for being so dedicated, courageous, and selfless, for showing up every day in these extraordinary times, knowing the risks they faced, for performing their work with excellence for those we serve, and for supporting our youth as well as each other. Yes, the pandemic has changed our work, but it has not kept us from doing it. And despite the effects of the pandemic, our staff has continued to work hard on behalf of the youth who rely on our emergency shelter, our transitional housing program, and our outreach services. Throughout these difficult times and unexpected changes and challenges, our team continued to respond to critical needs. They had to be ready for anything. They carried out the essential work of our organization and made a profound difference in the lives of hundreds of youths in desperate need of help, hope, and care. Our team acted to ensure we were able to deliver our services in a safe and sustainable way for youth and staff alike. They came together to cover shifts, prepare meals, shop for groceries, answer phone calls, emails, clean, do laundry, whatever it took to support the youth in their care. And as you know, the situation was changing by the moment, but they continue to do their best to adapt to these changes. They implemented safety procedures and ensured that proper precautions were being taken by all. Our outreach services were delivered virtually by our outreach team. They allowing us to continue to engage with vulnerable youth and who may otherwise have been disconnected from mainstream services and supports. Through the lockdowns, they were able to establish supportive relationships, provide counseling, advice, advocacy, and referral services. And when possible, help youth access necessary services and supports that help them move back in with their families or into permanent housing. They actively engaged within the communities they served by raising awareness about homelessness, and provided education about how to prevent it in the future. They provided meals, food, and care packages as needed. I am extremely proud to be part of a remarkable organization working to end youth homelessness in our community. No amount of praise will ever be enough to express our gratitude for the work our staff continues to do. But I am pleased and grateful that you have chosen to honor them for their dedication, passion, and commitment to our youth. It is because of them, after all, that young lives are changed completely and forever. Thank you. Thank you very much for those words, Lucy, and for the work that you and your staff and uh, everyone associated with Youth Haven do uh, for young people who need that helping hand and uh, for whom you are um, just a, a lifeline at so many difficult times. Uh, and thank you for all the changes you've had to deal with over the past uh, past two years, especially. Uh, to your staff, uh, we can only say thank you on behalf of a grateful community. And those staff are Alma, Anne, Christine, Cynthia, Danielle, Aaron, France, Jillian, 
Jennifer, Jessica, Catherine, Kim, Laura, Louise, Micheline, Natalie, Nicole, Raven, Stacy, Taylor, and Tyra. Thank you all so much for the work that you do. Okay, we will uh, now ask uh, Megan Chambers to join us who, oh, and there she is uh, from the Elizabeth Fry Society of Simcoe Muskoka. Megan, welcome to City Council. Thank you so much for the work that you do at E. Fry. And uh, would you like to say a few words? Thank you very much, Mayor Lehman and members of council. Thank you for having us here and taking the time and the space to to honor and celebrate our shelter workers. Um, it's hard to articulate the amazing work of our shelter workers, but I will certainly do my best. The Elizabeth Fry Society Shelter Program, known as Joyce Coast Cope House, uh, moved its operations on March 22nd, 2020 from our home location into a hotel as a response to the COVID-19 pandemic. The response was meant to be temporary in an attempt to keep shelter participants and staff as safe as possible from the contraction of the virus. Almost two years later, we've expanded our team and bed capacity from providing emergency shelter to 25 women and gender diverse individuals to between 65 and 70 each and every night. Our workers provide a range of trauma-informed support based on individualized needs, from safety planning and crisis management to reintegration after incarceration, harm reduction, and housing support. In the last two years, our operations adapted and so did our shelter workers. They're not only responding to individualized needs, they're responding to a pandemic and riding the waves of outbreaks and risking their own health in the meantime. They're also responding to the fallout of an affordable housing crisis, and a toxic drug crisis. As mentioned by Sarah Petal, our shelter workers are often the front line to the first, first responders. Tending to medical emergencies and overdoses at, alar at an alarming rate. They're providing life-saving CPR and supportive services to individuals accessing shelter, people that they care about deeply and people they often spend more time with than their own families. Our staff work tirelessly celebrating triumphs with our participants during times of joy and grieving with them and for the ones that we've lost. Our staff show up every day with a shared mission to end chronic homelessness in our community and to support some of the most vulnerable neighbors with dignity and respect in the meantime. This week, our team experienced an on-site loss. Together, we grieved and held, held space for one, one another as participants called our shelter workers family. Shelter work has never been easy, some, certainly something that I wouldn't define as easy, but most recently it's been exceptionally hard. It takes very special and incredibly dedicated individuals to want to and to be able to do this work. As an executive director, I'm extremely proud of each and every one of them for their adaptability, their strength, their willingness, and their passion to show up each and every day. Thank you again for, for holding this space for our shelter workers, um, as, as all shelter workers in the city of Barrie and shelter providers, we've been working collaboratively um, for the last two years pretty closely and, um, and sharing the shared experiences that our frontline workers are going through. And I, I'm incredibly happy to see that they are being acknowledged on this level. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Megan, and uh, for uh, the work that um, you and, and the other shelter providers have done together. But uh, in particular, I, I'm guessing from the background that both you and uh, Sarah Paddle are still at work at this hour of yeah. night. Yeah, at the, uh, at the hotel as you have been all the way along. Um, there's no such thing as normal working hours uh, and there's no such thing as a normal, a single normal day. Um, it, it is uh, incredibly difficult work. It requires so much passion, commitment, and creativity at times, uh, and just so much emotional labor, and uh, especially to be caring for twice as many people as you were before the pandemic, uh, as with Busby and with uh, other organizations in our community. So thank you for what you do for your organization and to your staff. We, uh, on behalf of the entire community, we want to say thank you for your work. And those staff are Allison, Amelia, uh, Angelica, Ashley O, Ashley S, uh, Biles, uh, Bild, sorry, uh, Bonnie, Brandy, Brittany, Christine, Courtney, Dana, Debbie, Denise, Emily, Aaron, Hannah, Heather, Honey, Jenna, Jenica, 
Kim, Lee, Mallory, Rihanna, Rebecca, Sarah, Sharday, uh, Sheila, Stephanie, Taylin, Taylor, Tracy Mick, Tracy M, Tracy W, Vanessa C, Vanessa W, and Victoria. Thank you all for the work you do in our community. And the final organization tonight that we wish to, that we're gonna be recognizing is uh, of course the John Howard Society of Simcoe Muskoka. And with us tonight is Susanna McCarthy, Executive Director. Susanna, welcome to City Council. Uh, needless to say, thank you for the work that you and your organization do in Barrie. And would you like to say a few words? Yes, thank you so much for having me. So the John Howard Society has been part of the Barrie community since 2007. In general, we work for human justice by supporting people whose lives are affected by our criminal justice system. We advocate for effective, just, and humane responses to crime and its causes. Our work builds safer communities through the use of evidence-based programming and services delivered across Ontario from skills training to youth counseling for affected families and employment assistance for folks who are beginning a new life after incarceration. We promote practical, equitable policies, raising awareness of the root causes of crime and calling on Ontarians to share responsibility for addressing these causes. Within our criminal justice system, we advocate for the fair treatment of all. As the system evolves to reflect our changing society, we work to ensure that no one is left behind. Recently, we embarked on a warming project in Barrie. We're in no way experts in warming centers, but we saw a need in the community and we had a belief that we would be able to lend a hand in filling it. We wanted to minimize the drain on services such as EMS and law enforcement by providing a safe location where members of our community could come in, be warm and access resources. Through much planning, work, and the support, the support of City Council, we were able to launch the warming program in January. This program has led to the development of a partnership between a number of service providers and the community, and it's become an illustration of what is really possible when a community bands together with a collective vision. Each day, we see the impact of this shared vision as people come through our doors to access support, warmth, and resources. In the three weeks we've been operating, we've had over 300 visits between our two warming centers. We've also watched the community form in the warming centers and have seen many participants develop a sense of pride and even a sense of ownership over the programming. Participants are eager to help and support and ensure everyone feels welcome. I want to extend my sincere thanks to the residents of Barrie, our collaborating partners, City Council, the County of Simcoe, for their ongoing support of our unsheltered neighbors and this warming project. We would not have this level of success without the incredible collaboration, compassion, and support we've received. So thank you. Thank you so much, Suzanne, and for, the, for uh, stepping up and uh, for the uh, creativity and energy that you brought uh, to efforts this year, uh, but to the work you've done and the advocacy you do uh, as the ED of the John Howard Society of Simcoe Muskoka. Uh, thank you on behalf of the community and especially, of course, to the staff of the John Howard Society. And those staff are Brittany, Carlos, Chad, Charita, Christine, Darren, Haley, Jesse, Carly, Nancy, Natalie, Rebecca, Sue, and Travis. Thank you all so much. Uh, it goes without saying uh, that this um, work that's done in our community by shelter workers is uh, among the most difficult kind of work, the most um, uh, trying and emotionally heavy work that you can imagine. Uh, and yet uh, we have so many people as we uh, listen to those lists tonight, so many individuals uh, who do this work uh, to, to support our least fortunate neighbors. Uh, but the last comment I wanted to make uh, is that um, we are incredibly lucky in our community to be served by the six leaders of these organizations. Uh, and they got to say a few words tonight, but having worked with them in various capacities over the years, uh, I can tell you our community is so fortunate uh, to have um, leaders that are inspiring to their staff, uh, who have pivoted with all of the things that are thrown their way, who constantly find a way to make it work, uh, and foremost, uh, always foremost in their mind uh, are the people they serve. Uh, and uh, for that, as mayor, I am hugely grateful and I'm sure you are as members of council and, and our residents are as well. And so to Susanna, Megan, Lucy, uh, Jerry Croto at uh, Gilbert, 
Major Stephanie Watkinson, and of course, Sarah Petal, thank you uh, for the work you do in leadership in this community. Uh, Councillor Natalie Harris, did you wanna say something? Sorry, thank you, Mayor Lehman, for letting me do this. Um, I just wanted to say um, a quick thank you as well to Ryan's Hope. So they are an organization of all, purely volunteer and um, Christine Naylor and her uh, husband, Tom, have been providing breakfasts, um, I believe, since last winter. So over a year now to the homeless every morning. They also do a night shift where they drive around and try to fill in the gaps where other services might not have uh, the hands to do it that night. Um, and, and Christine and Tom also volunteer in the warming centers and are kind of a hub in the community for collections of donations and just an amazing advocacy and a voice in memory of their son, Ryan, who died because of the toxic uh, drug crisis. So um, thank you so much for letting me mention them as well. They're new, I guess, in the city, and it would be nice to make them a, 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 a name that we know um, just as well as all the other services because of all the hard work that they do. So thank you. Thanks, Councillor Harris. And, and yes, it should be noted, of course, we, we didn't come anywhere near to recognizing all the organizations that assist uh, the least fortunate in our community, for example, the Berry Food Bank, and uh, they have dozens and, and indeed hundreds of volunteers and dozens of staff doing the work too. So while we're able to recognize our shelter workers tonight and the, uh, and the uh, two outreach organizations that work with them, uh, there are so many other great organizations in our community that we're thankful for as well. Check out the links to these organizations in the description below. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.